Howdy y'all, I'm Brylin. Now there were a lot of lies and just disturbing things said at the Demonic National Convention. But in this video, we're gonna look at part of Kamila's acceptance speech and I'm gonna break down every single lie and show you the truth but like the truthy truth. But first, hey, if you love America and are praying that God would spare this country from being taken over by the radical left anymore, then would you hit that like button to help spread the truth? Here we go. This is Kamila's acceptance speech. You know, the totally not installed, 100% legitimate, right guys? And so on behalf of the people, on behalf of every American, regardless of party. So she got approximately, what is this, like three seconds into her acceptance speech and says it's on behalf of the people and on behalf of every American. This is coming from Kamila's own face. The one that literally got zero votes. What had to be installed. They had to literally do a, a, a cue. In fact, here's Gavin Newsom of California admitting that commie love was installed. How are you feeling about the switch? I mean, <laughs> the switch. <laughs> now just... we went through a very open process, <laughs> a very inclusive process. Uh, it was wow. bottom up. I don't know if uh, you know that. Yes, that's what I've been told to say. Yes, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a that's blitz what primary, I, mean. I believe. That's, that's what right. they called it. It's a very, very fast <laughs> blitz. <laughs> I think it was it's a uh, blink primary, so you call that. Oh, you know, a 30 wow. minute uh, yeah. convention? Yeah, yeah, you know, between that tweet and uh, another tweet. It's amazing yeah. how it happened. Yeah, it's yeah. been amazing. But it is, what is amazing is how unified everybody is. Yeah. Do you get it yet? That's what I've been told to say. <laughs> Newsom just admitted to everything in a very fun and loving way, like no big deal, right, guys? <laughs> I know there are people of various political views watching tonight, and I want you to know, I promise to be a president for all Americans. You can always <laughs> trust me to put country above party and self, to hold America's fundamental principles from the rule of law to free and fair elections to the peaceful transfer of power. Wow. I don't know about you, but when she said, you can trust me, it did something so vile to my soul that I don't even know how to explain it. By the way, she says she's going to be a president for all people, of course, especially since her entire campaign, which is totally legit, is not run on any policy whatsoever, but is literally just ran on attacking you if you're not a far radical leftist. By the way, it's funny when she says she's going to be a president for all, when she was literally ranked the most liberal senator back in 2019, and she's gotten even more radical since then, <laughs> believe it or not. But the webpage that rated her the most liberal was GovTrack, and it suddenly disappeared. Kind of funny how that happens. Here's the actual page on GovTrack. Nothing's there anymore. Hmm, I wonder why. However, it's the internet. You can't hide anything. So here's the archive.org. And this is the 2019 report card here where she was ranked the most liberal compared to all senators. In fact, so much for being the president for all people. Look, she was ranked as joining bipartisan bills the least often compared to other Democrats. She refuses to do anything if it is not absolute radical leftism and socialism and communism and all the fun things. Not only that, but check out how bizarre this is. She held the fewest committee positions, introduced the second most bills, ranked the second top leader, yet was the third most absent in votes compared to all senators and got the third fewest bills, 
by bipartisan co-sponsors. Never forget that this woman is one of the most radical politicians in the government. There is nothing bipartisan. There is nothing about her that wants to be the president for you if you're not a part of the insane, radical, depraved ideology of the left. In fact, remember when she said this? You know, we have to stay woke. Like everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. (laughs) Yeah. The point is, is you will never be woke enough for Kamila. From the rule of law to free and fair elections to the peaceful transfer of power. (laughs) From the rule of law to free and fair elections, to the peaceful transfer of power. Let's knock those three out real quick. Talk to me about the defund the police movement and what do you think is the most, uh, the first piece of legislation that should happen um, towards reforming the police? (laughs) So at its essence, Andy, it really, I believe, is about reimagining public safety and how we achieve it. Okay. You know, for far too long, the status quo thinking has been to believe that by putting more police on the street, you're going to have more safety. And that's just wrong. It's just, that's not how it works. Also, Kamila promises amnesty for millions of illegals and nationwide mail-in voting. Gee, I wonder why she wants to do that. This woman has no sense of the rule of law in our country. She does not care about our constitutional republic. In fact, you know, when the left says anything about democracy, our democracy is at stake, we must save our democracy. What they're saying is we must keep control by any means necessary. In fact, I thought this was a very insightful video. Kamala Harris is partly responsible for the lack of integrity in California's elections where we Mm. don't update our our voter database. Illegal immigrants are registered. She was a big proponent of motor voter. And of course, you suggest cleaning it up by having voter ID, which 28 states in this nation have voter ID. The Supreme Court has said it's perfectly legal. It does not suppress the vote. A majority of Latinos, a majority of African Americans support voter her ID according to all the national polls and yet she wants you to show true. an ID to show up and be in her majestic presence. I know. But if you require it to simply get a ballot and cast a vote, racist. nope, it's racist. And it's funny because Kamila said that there will be a peaceful transfer of power. As long as that transfer of power is from Kamila to, to Kamila. I love how people keep forgetting that Kamila is literally the vice president of the United States right now. She is in power. And she keeps saying she's going to fix everything. On day one, if you make me president, I'm going to fix everything. She's in office right now. She can absolutely start doing all those things now. But she's not going to do them now. She didn't do them before and she won't do them in the future. In fact, here's far left Congressman Jamie Raskin. This is what that peaceful transfer of power will look like if the radical left doesn't win. Can be put into the constitution, can slip away from you very quickly. And the greatest example going on right now before our very eyes is section three of the 14th amendment, which they're just disappearing with a magic wand as if it doesn't exist, even though it could not be clearer what it's stating. And so, you know, they want to kick it to Congress. So it's going to be up to us on January 6, 2025, to tell the rampaging Trump mobs that he's disqualified. And then we need bodyguards for everybody in civil war conditions. This is the far left right here. They're telling you that if the far left doesn't win, they're going to make sure to use the power that they have to stop the will of the people. This has nothing to do with democracy and definitely has nothing to do with our constitutional republic. You know, our constitution, our bill of rights, all all those things don't mean anything to these people. They will do and say whatever they can to keep the power that they have. Check out how she gloats about the power that she held when she was a prosecutor. I learned. I think I was, I don't know, 22 when I started that work. I learned that with the swipe of my pen, 
I could charge someone with the lowest level offense. And because of the swipe of my pen, wow. that person could be arrested. They could sit in jail for at least 48 hours. Wow. They could lose time from work and their family maybe lose their job. They'd have to come out of their own pocket to help hire a lawyer. They'd lose standing in their community. This is disgusting. All because of the swipe of my pen. Weeks later, I could dismiss the charges, but their life would forever be changed. So I learned at a very young age the power. Now imagine putting her in the highest office of the land. You think this is going to change? No, that power is going to swell in her even more. This is them telling you who they are and then you going like, well, no, that's that's not actually <laughs> who, who you are. No, that is who I am. No, no, but it's like not actually who you are, right? No, it, it, it is, it is who I am, but it's not actually who you are. As a young courtroom prosecutor in Oakland, California, I stood up for women and children. It's funny how Kamila fought to keep nonviolent prisoners locked up longer than they should have been so that she could use them as laborers as workers. Says as California Attorney General, she spent years subverting the 2011 Supreme Court ruling requiring the state to reduce its prison population. Oh, and you know the whole communistic price gouging that she's gonna just use the, what'd she say, the, the swipe of her pen to executive order into law? <laughs> Even major retailers, like the CEO of Target even came out. But never forget, that this whole price gouging thing that she would just swipe her pen to, to executive order into law. It, yeah, it sounds so fair and everybody's equal now and everybody will equally not be able to afford anything anymore. They will do everything they can to destroy this nation. They've already promised that and they've shown that they would do that their entire careers. This is what they've been working towards. But we don't have to fear these people. None of this is meant to be a scare tactic, but instead for you to see the truth. But check out what Psalm 103 says. It says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. You know, we should have a reverent fear of God. We should not fear man, we should fear God. You know, this isn't talking about having a fear of God like an unbeliever has, where an unbeliever's fear of God is based in eternal death and eternal separation from God and judgment from God. But our fear of God is based on a reverence for God and his power and his might and his truth. And it's telling us that God has such a steadfast love towards those who have a reverent fear of him. And it goes on to say that he will have compassion on those who fear him. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.